ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والرحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يستحق لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار My dear respected elders and brothers and sisters in Islam, a very great month has already passed us, and a lot amongst us have freed ourselves from the hellfire. May Allah protect us from it. A lot of us have taken the advantage of the month, of the minutes, of the hours, of the seconds, of the days, of the weeks, of the jumas. of the qiyam of the salah of the siyam of the ruku of the sujood in each and every act of worship a lot of us had taken advantage of the mercy of allah azza wa jal in which allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned through his messenger his final messenger muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam that anybody who fasts during the month of ramadan with iman and ihtisab with with full conviction with iman and full conviction allah will forgive all his sins so a lot of us have gotten our sins forgiven alhamdulillah a lot of us have through the siyam that we did and some of us through the salah that we did and some of us even to the in the last nights we took advantage and we searched for the laylatul qadr in which Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that the one night was equal to 1,000 year, 1,000 months, in which even Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala mentioned in one of His surahs uh, that one day, that night of Laylatul Qadr, is equal to 1,000 months. And during this night, we got ourselves forgiven all our sins. and we were we were freed from the hell fire and inshallah we, we will be amongst those who will enter into jannah a lot amongst us were very observant and careful during this month of ramadan and this is the month which taught us so many lessons it taught us lessons about our own selves our own selves our own nafs that it witness the fact that during this month my brothers and sisters i would like you to focus on this and try to go back in the 29 days that we fasted and from the night that we heard that it was ramadan next day what was our attitude what happened to our habits that we used to be so we were so used to doing the televisions were covered up the sound systems were put to rest and a lot of us we stopped doing things and i know for certainly for a fact that there are so many brothers alhamdulillah during this month they took the opportunity they used to have the habit of smoking and they gave up their smoking they took advantage of this fact that allah is the one with his mercy has given us a month which is more blessed than any other month and allah taught us that you o oh ahmad o oh umar o oh abdullah o oh abdul rahman you are able to do what you are not able to do in the rest of the months the whole year 11 months of allah subhanahu wa 
Mahadara. All the months are Allah's months. But the whole year you were not able to observe and you were not able to have that level of taqwa that you did in Ramadan. But sadly, my brothers, this Ramadan in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raised our iman and he raised our taqwa and he, and he enabled us to make the amount of worship and the type of worship that we were not able to do throughout the year. A lot of us realized it and a lot of us just did it as a ritual. We did it as a tradition because our community is doing it, we did it. But a lot of us, we did it consciously. With the consciousness and with the focus, why are we doing this? What is the reason that we're doing it? Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, my brothers. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When he was given the news to go and proclaim about this beautiful religion of ours, in which each and every commandment is a blessing for human beings. Each and every ordainment is a blessing for us. Each and everything that Allah has commanded it is beneficial for us and for our society, for our family, for our children, for our community, for, our, for the Muslims and for the non-Muslims. Not only that, it is also beneficial for haywanat, for the animals. For the animals, this is our being of mercy. And he sent the most merciful, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa to teach us Allah's deen, the final testament. And he taught us, and during the time when the revelation came to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa he was not told to proclaim this beautiful deen immediately. But when he was told to do so, the first sermon of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he called his people to Islam, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa started by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and thanking him. And I'll read the translation of what he said. He said, Verily Allah, one whom his people sent to search for water and grass. There used to be a, a person appointed in those days. He would go out to look for water and grass because they were living in a barren land and in a desert. So he said, Verily Allah, he does not lie to his people. And the type of person that is appointed to do this task is a trustworthy person. It's a person with the quality that when he comes back with the news of water and grass or whatever pasture that he discovered and found and he will come and tell his tribe. His tribe was desperate and destitute for water and, and drink and, and agriculture. And when he would come and say, he would come and give a proper news, authentic news. This is the quality Muhammad sallallahu was given even before the revelation came. And this is why he was known as a sadiq. Some people called him, you know, we have nicknames for people. And in those days there were nicknames uh, in Arabia, in the Arab people, famous according to the uh, actions or, or what they were famous for. Like Abu Huraira. Abu Huraira was famous for loving cats. He loved cats so much that people called him a nickname Abu Huraira. Huraira means cat. The father of cat. He wasn't the father of cat, but they used to give him this, this kind of nickname. They were, so Prophet Muhammad was known as a sadiq. And he was known also by another name called Al Amin, the trustworthy, the truthful. So when he came out, he said, Verily, the arise he does not lie to his people by Allah. Even if I lie to all the people, I would never lie to you. You, my people, my tribe, the fresh. And if I deceived all people, I would never deceive you. By Allah, other than whom there is no deity worthy of worship. And the fresh, they were people. They were tribal people. They were warring people. They were, they were people who uh, knew, even though they knew about Allah as a well. They had so many gods, 360 gods, one god for each day. 
So then as we reflect, why we did this Ramadan? Why did we follow the month of Ramadan like the way we did? We were ahead in our Salah. Even to the na- last night, it was it was a testimony. It was it, it was a testimony for m- so many people who were not seen in the masjid throughout the year, but in the last ten nights, they were right ahead in the first few rows. Why were we doing this? Were we doing this because people were doing? Were we doing this because we inherited from it from our parents? Were we doing it because our neighbors were doing it? Were we doing it because our husband, our wives were doing it? Were we doing it because our parents were doing it? Why were we doing this? Why were we up ahead doing all this worship and working so hard during Ramadan? And when Ramadan has passed us by, let us remind ourselves why we were doing it. And this incident, my brothers, I will, it will inshallah give us the realization why we spent Ramadan like we did. So Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa he went on to say, I would never deceive you, and by Allah, other than whom, there is no deity worthy of worship. By Allah, and he swore by Allah, other than whom, there is no deity, there is no other God worthy of worship. I am Allah's messenger. I am Allah's prophet, Allah's messenger, to you in particular, and to all the people in general. To all the people in general. So before he said that I am your messenger, he reminded that by Allah, by Allah, other than whom there is no deity worthy of worship. And I am the messenger of Allah. I am that person who brings you the news, who brings the new he, he brings you and he teaches you what is your purpose of your life. Not only how to spend Ramadan, but how to spend each and every minute of your day, of the rest of the year, and the rest of our lives. And by Allah, you will die just as easy as you sleep. He went on to say, and he reminded them about death. He reminded them immediately after reminding there is only one God. There is no other deity, and they knew who Allah was, but they had last Buzza and Manah which were actually, ages back, it used to be the attributes of Allah. But they turned them into God itself. The attributes, they made them into statues and angels, and they turned them into, into deities that they used to worship. So he reminded them there is one God, and he is the messenger. And he gave them the news that he is the messenger from Allah. And then he reminded them of death. How many of us have heard people having passed away during the month of Ramadan. During the month or before the month of Ramadan, or after the month of Ramadan, or during the rest of the year. Some people have died in a state which is so, in, in such a sorry state. Some people, they were, they were so blessed by Allah Azza that they died during Salah. Some people, they died during their fast, when they were fasting. Some people died in their sleep. And some people had very tragic deaths in accidents or, you know, in, in some tragedy. And he reminded them that by Allah, you will die just as easy as you sleep. And you will be resurrected just as easy as you wake up from your sleep. When you accept that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah, that Allah Azza wa Jalla, this is the reason why we are in this world, only to testify the fact that there is no other deity, and there is only one deity, and we should not call out. We should not begin with anybody's name but the name of Allah. This is why we Muslims and all the prophets and messengers from the time of Adam salam till Muhammad salam Noah and Ibrahim and Musa and Isa and Muhammad salam and Sulaiman and Dawood and all the prophets and messengers, whenever they began, they began with the name of Allah. They did not begin with the name of Isa or with the name of any deity or Musa or Muhammad sallam. They began with the name of Allah. And this is why Muhammad sallam, he used to say Bismillah before starting any good, anything that he would do. And then he reminded us that you will die one day. Surely every one of us, when
whether we are, whether every human being, whether he's a Muslim or a non-Muslim, he knows that he's going to die. In what state we are going to die? Are we going to die in a state when we are rebellious against Allah and His Messenger and in refusing or in rebellion to the commandments of Allah? Are we going to die in a state when we are not praying five times a day? When we are not giving zakah when we are eligible, you are eligible to give zakah. When we are able to do hajj and we are not doing hajj. When we are able to fast during Ramadan but we are not fasting. When we are able to make up for the missing fast and we are not doing so. When we are able to do good to someone but we are not doing it. When we are able to do good and worship Allah Azzawajal perfectly, but we are not worshiping Him. If you die in this state, then it would be a sorry state. But if you die like Allah Azzawajal mentioned, فَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ And this is what Muhammad Wasallam reminded. If you bear witness that there is no God worthy of worship except Allah, and Muhammad is the messenger of Allah, and Atiyu Allah wa Atiyu Rasul, and you follow Allah, and you obey Allah, and you follow Him, and you submit to Him, and you follow Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and His teaching. Your way through your Lord is through the prophets and messengers. It's all the prophets and messengers they taught their people. But if you die in this state as a Muslim, as the one who is submitted to Allah Azza then Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said, verily, by Allah, your death will be as easy as you fall off to sleep. How many of us, we fall off to sleep and we don't even realize? Prophet Sallallahu he taught us to say some ibrah, some du'as before going to sleep. He, he taught us to say some ibrah, and he used to recite certain surahs before going to sleep, and certain ayahs, and certain dhikr before going to sleep. How many of us, we start doing dhikr and shaitan, he starts bringing, you know, different thoughts and dreams and, and hallucinations and thoughts and then we fall asleep, we go into fear. Muhammad is saying, by Allah, if this is the state you die in, if this is the state you die in, in submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in obedience to Allah and in obedience to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa when you will die, it will be as easy as you sleep. May Allah give us this kind of death. It will be as easy as you sleep. And the day of resurrection, which is, a, which is another time, which will be a time of difficulty. Just like when a baby is born, he is going from one phase to another phase. From the, womb, from, from the womb of the mother. You know what the womb of the mother is called in Arabic? It is called Rahim. Rahim. You know what is Rahim means? Rahim means mercy. And in this merciful state when a baby is lying there, sucking his thumb, eating and drinking his sustenance from the mother's cord, that's the cord that Allah has put in there. And he's in such a comfortable and relaxed state. And he's in the rahm, in the mercy of Allah. When he comes out from the rahm, he starts crying and wailing and screaming. And the doctors, they wonder what happened. I didn't even touch this baby. Because it comes to another state, in a completely new environment, a harsh environment compared to the rahm. A harsh environment, wallahi. This world, this dunya, it is a deception, my brothers. And the sign is, as soon as you're born, you start crying when you come to this world. And when you grow up, you forget about it. And you get busy with the enjoyment. And the things that pass your time, that you forget that when you came to this world, you were crying and wailing. You were crying and wailing in distress. And on the deathbed, this is another phase. This is what happens, my brother. When the angel of death comes to you, he doesn't give any warning. And for some people, the sakarat al maut is so difficult. It is so difficult. It is as if, as Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in one of the hadith he mentioned, you are taking hooks. Imagine you took the hooks and you are scraping it on top of a jute bag. You know what is a jute bag? Or imagine a, cloth, a rough cloth. 
are wrapped in a coarse cloth. You take hooks and you try to drag and you try to pull this and tear this, this cloth with this hook. This is the state, the roof or the soul comes out of a body of a person who is rebellious, who is not in the state of submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is not in the state as a Muslim. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa reminded in the first khutbah, in the first sermon, in the first speech that he gave to anybody, to his people, he's reminding, you will die as easy as you go off to sleep, and you will be raised as easy as you wake up. As easy as you wake up. By Allah, he went on to say, and then he went on to say, you will be recompensed on account of what you do. Only good for good and evil for evil. Verily, it is either paradise for eternity or the or, or the hellfire for eternity. May Allah protect us from the hellfire. And may Allah give us tender to the loss. And he went on to say, You will be recompensed on account of what you do. Let us go and reflect on what we did during Ramadan. And let us make a vow to ourselves. Make a vow that we are capable of doing what we did during Ramadan. If you are not capable of month, uh, uh, fasting throughout the rest of the months of the year, at least you can fast during Monday and Thursdays, which is the Sunnah of Muhammad Sallallahu At least you can, if you are not able to do Monday and Thursday, at least you can do three days in a month, 13th, 14th and 15th, as was the Sunnah of Muhammad Sallallahu You are able to do it, my brothers and sisters. We are able to do it. And this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us. Through his, you know, through, through, through his different signs, through the occasions, through people. Sometimes Allah reminds us, corrects us by different people. Allah has said in the Quran, He corrects us. He sends people to us to correct us. And sometimes He reminds us by daily. Sometimes he reminded by different ayahs. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi reminded the people that if you die in this state, you will, be, you will die a very easy death. And you will be raised very easily, a very easy resurrection. And you will be recompensed of only what you do, what, what good you gain, and what evil you did for yourself and for, for you know, your, living, your actions. Very it is either paradise or it is hellfire. And what is paradise and hellfire, my brothers and sisters? Let us go back today. I will leave, leave the khutbah, I will end the khutbah at this. Let us go back today when we go to our houses. At least we go and read about the description of Al Jannah and about the description of the hellfire. And let us realize why we did this Ramadan, the way we observed it. Why did we observe Ramadan the way we observed it? Why were we so, you know, in, in front of doing all the good deeds, the charity, the, you know, the ibadah, the praying during the nights, when we were not, it was even difficult for us to wake up even during Fajr the rest of the year. And during this month, we were awake all night or half of the night and even waking up for Fajr, even doing all the five times prayers and doing all the good, the good deeds that we were able to do. The time is very short, my brothers. Not for the khutbah, but for our lives. The angel of death is hovering on top of, of our heads. We don't know when life, when the soul will come out. And when the angel will come, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he gives him the command, he says, La yasun Allah ma'ana. He will not disobey. Angels, they do not disobey Allah's command, no matter what the command is. They will obey. They will obey no matter what the command is. Just like there are angels that are appointed to take care of people in the hellfire. They will be harsh on them, no doubt about it. Because these people were harsh on themselves and on other people. May Allah protect us from this. I ask Allah Azza that He gives us the opportunities that He gave us in Ramadan during the rest of the year. I ask Allah Azza that He forgives us and accepts all our ibadah during Ramadan. 
I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that how merciful He is by His greatest name, Ya Hayy, Ya Qayyum, Ya Allah, Ya Rabbi, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim, Ya Kareem, Ya Dajjalali wa Ikram. Forgive us our sins, save us from the hellfire, and enter us into Jannah, and enter us into Jannah with the cross. إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهان عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا